Hi, hello friends. Welcome back to RK Electrical Grid. So in this session, we are going to have a quick revision on power system. We know power system is the very important subject in each and every exam. You can expect at least 10 percentage of the maximum mark. Yes. Let us continue. We will have a quick revision on each and every concept. Firstly, first we will be starting from generating station. The most important parameter stations are nuclear, hydro, thermal. The things that you have to observe in nuclear, first one, fuel, that is uranium. There are two types, one is natural, another one is enriched. In enriched uranium, we will be having uh, 10, 5 to 10 percentage of uranium to 35. The moderator that we are using in here, in case of uh, natural uranium, heavy water or graphite or beryllium. In case of enriched water, will be, sorry, enriched uranium will be going with the ordinary water. Next, the components. First one is reactor. There are two types, one is homogeneous, another one is non-homogeneous. And it is made up of stainless steel or zirconium. The next one, coolant material. We will be using two types of coolant material. One is lithium, another one is NA, and that is sodium. And uh, types of coolant, uh, first one is uh, gas coolant reactor. It can be a hydrogen or carbon dioxide or air. And uh, the next one, liquid metal, or you can use organic liquid, or you can use heavy water or ordinary water. Next, control rods. Control rods will be having, uh, what is the purpose? Control rods is supporting for the generating session when there will be a gas quark. And second thing, it is placed inside the reactor to supply the sufficient amount of neutrons during the fission reaction. So the materials are gadmium or <coughs> boron, they will be acting as a neutron absorbers. Next, hydroelectric power station. In hydroelectric power station, we will be having potential energy that will be converted into electrical energy and will be passing the water from the very high level. And here the important components are one is water reservoir. To store the water, then it will be running the prime over. Next. Dam. Dam is uh, supporting us to store the water, to run the prime over. Yes. Surge tank. It is uh, reducing the pressure of the water when it is coming from the high level just to uh, prevent from the water hammer effect. Next. Specific speed. If, if you are designing the alternator, sorry, hydro power plant station, for a specific speed, how to design? The specific speed, uh, based on the this spe specific speed in metric unit, we will be designing the hydro power plant and the calculation for this we will have to know the speed of the turbine that we are going to rotate in RPM and its corresponded output power in metric or square unit and the height of the power plant. That's all. Next, if they are talking about the output power, the formula is Q rho G H under efficiency. These are the some of the factors. Directly I wrote the formula and you can read all our things without without uh, just to pass the video and note all those things properly. Okay. We don't have much time, we'll be quickly moving on to the next one. The classification, there will be two types of hydro power plant. One is based on the load. First, uh, we will be having two types of load. One is called a base load, another one is called peak load. Base load is a constant load uh, demanded by the consumer for whole 365 days under 24 hours in a year. It means uh, for the base load, we will be running this alternator continuously. Hydro power plant will be in operation for the whole year and will be supplying this base load. And if you observe the power factor of the hydro power plant, when it is uh, supporting for base load, it is very high. Power factor is very high. When I am talking about uh, peak loads, sometimes uh, peak load will be very peak during uh, summer season as an example. During the peak load, we will be having other types of uh, power plant, hydro power plant that is called peak load hydro power plant. Here we will be having powerful storage water. So with the help of that process, we will be continuously supplying when there is, whenever there is a peak load demand is required. So these are the two types. Another one, uh, we will be talking about different types of uh, turbines that we are using in our uh, alternator. <coughs> based on the first one, based on the direction of the water flow. For tangential, we will be using Feltron. For uh, <coughs> diagonal, we will be using Delius. For radial, we will be using Francis. For axis, we will be using Kaplan. So now if you are talking about the water discharge. First one, if you are having low level discharge, then we will be going with the Feltron. Medium discharge, Francis. Then high discharge, Kaplan. Now, based on the high pressure, I can say if the pressure is very high, this impulse, then we will have to use Peltron. And uh, Kaplan, Francis, uh, propeller are used for reactions, other things. Okay. Next, if you are talking about steam power plant, next one, in steam power plant, we will be generating the heat energy by uh, <coughs> that is coal combustion process. We are uh, burning the coal and we will be converting the, uh, generating the heat energy, then with the help of heat energy, we will be generating the electrical energy in steam power plant. Yes. Here, the important components are superheater. Yes, it is heating the water to the high level in order to convert it into power, huge amount of stream, creating the high pressure stream. 
and uh, economizer it will be heating the feed water yes <coughs> one second fine sir next when we are talking about condenser condenser is just condensing the steam that is coming out of the turbine from the turbine whatever the steams are coming back after creating the after rotating the turbine those steams will be condensed converted into water with the help of condenser next on uh, electrostatic precipitator it will be removing the dust particles from the flow gases and uh, air free heater air free heater is simply acting what it will do is whatever the air that are absorbing from the atmosphere it will be heated and then it will be passed through the boiler uh, for effective combustion process Yes, combustion actually. Next one is economic load dispatch, the another important topic. So, with the last, without last, the important point uh, to solve the problems directly in economic load dispatch is without power loss, the cost of fuel incremental cost will be. This is the formula, just to remember this. So, incremental cost in each and every power plant will become equal to each other. Yes, that is over. Now, here, incremental cost of each and every plant should become equal without power loss. Similarly, with the power loss, we will be considering the penalty factor also. So, penalty factor with the incremental cost. Product of these two must be equal to each other if I am considering the loss of the power system also. Sorry. <coughs> yeah, under this situation, so we will found there are two cases. Incremental cost, condition number one. Without power loss, this will be the condition. Just to remember this condition, that will be sufficient to crack the question. Second case, with the power loss, this will be the uh, formula. I have written the formula for penalty factor. Yes. And I have also written the formula. Everything will be directly given in the question and you can easily solve. And one more question. When we are considering the power loss, suppose if I am considering two units in our power system, what you will have to do is to know the total power loss, you will have to consider the transmission line coefficients of the unit 1 and uh, unit 2 and uh, you, between unit 1 and 2. And it is correspondent. Power in the unit 1, power in the unit 2 and product of unit 1 and the unit 2 power. Do remember this formula just to, to know the total loss. Okay, That is very important. When we are running the system, economic dispatch with the losses. Next, let us consider some of the other factors that we are considering to uh, transmit the power effectively without any losses. The first one is demand factor. We know it's the ratio between maximum demand and the connected load, and the demand factor should be always less than one. Next one is load factor. It's the ratio between average load to peak load. Yes, and if you are talking about average load, it is what is the formula? Number of units that are being generated per a day or per a month or per a year divided by if you are considering it per day total number of units generated per day then the denominator will be 24 hours if you are considering it for a month then the denominator will be number of hours per month if you are considering it for a year then approximate value will be 8760 hours per year so based on the period that we are considering you can explore the value of average load next diversity factor most important formula you will have to go to the load side, observe all sum of individual maximum demands divided by amongst all those individual maximum demand, choose the maximum one. Suppose if three values are given 100, 500, 1000, which one is the highest one here? 1000, which will this one will lie in the denominator. Other people, all sum of all this will lie in the numerator. In that case, numerator is higher than denominator, that's why diversity factor is always greater than one. Now, plant capacity factor, that is average demand divided by installed capacity of the power plant. Next one, plant capacity factor, yes, you know, this can also be written. See, here we are talking about plant capacity factor only. Here also I am talking about same. This is the alternative way of expression. It is also written as the product of load factor and utilization factor, whereas the formula for utilization factor will be maximum load divided by installed capacity. That's all. Next one. Let us discuss about transmission and distribution. I have covered uh, the important things for economic dispatch. Now, when we are discussing about transmission and distribution, let us classify. We will be having uh, different types of uh, distributions here. Like from the power system, let us start from the highest value that is uh, <coughs> ultra high voltage transmission that is 765 kilovolt. After that, we will be going uh, moving forward, we will be going with the MEHV and then we will be going with the EHV then we will be, we'll be going with this this, uh, this all are coming under the extra high voltage uh, transmission line only and hopefully there will be no doubts in this and after that we will be going with the <coughs> one minute yeah I am sorry yes next we will be going with the high voltage uh, different uh, levels yes so we have been started from ultra and will be ended up to high voltage or medium voltage up to the single phase I have derived all the values here okay Next, if we come into the uh, observations, so here when we are uh, talking about the transmission line, uh, the some of the observations are losses of the transmission line are always inversely proportional to supply voltage and inversely proportional to power factor. 
okay and when we are talking about the transmission line weight of the conductor that will also inversely proportional to supply voltage and the power factor from this i can say if i am increasing the supply voltage in the transmission line weight will be going down that's why in transmission line will be carrying huge amount of voltage but if i am talking about current if weight is increasing then power loss also will be increasing in the alternative way that's why we are trying to carry huge less amount of current so weight will be reduced so current is less voltage is high in our transmission line because of these reasons next if i am increasing the voltage uh, supply voltage then what will happen is in the transmission line when i am talking about the voltage drop across the resistor that will be going down next next in terms of efficiency if i am increasing the efficiency voltage will increase power factor will increase if i am increasing the voltage then stability will be increased because they are directly proportional the disadvantages are uh, first one in the transmission line insulation when we are increasing the voltage in the transmission line uh, while while trying to carry huge amount of voltage the other disadvantage is insulation level will increase corona discharge will increase and the communication interference will be increasing these are the some of the drawbacks when we are trying to carry huge amount of voltage but obviously these drawbacks when i am comparing the huge voltage with a uh, huge amount of current comparatively carrying huge voltage is the best option because weightage of the conductor will become very very less so, such as the transportation manufacturing cost everything will become easy for us and we can easily install the uh, distribution lines and the transmission lines so in the uh, voltage point of view so it is better Though insulation cost is increasing, corona discharge, okay, communication interference are occurring. It is adjustable. It's okay by doing some other actions we can avoid this. But it is not possible to increase the current and decrease the voltage. So the best choice is reducing the weight of the conductor and uh, reducing the losses of the transmission line, increasing the efficiency, decreasing the voltage drop, increasing the stability, power factor. So best choice in order to bring all this, the best choice is having huge amount of voltage. So that's why we are going with the huge amount of voltage. Next one, the conductors that we are using in our transmission line, one is copper, another one is aluminium. In aluminium, we are using different types. One is ACSR, right? Another one is, <coughs> one second, yeah. Now, you know, ACSR means what? Aluminium conductor steel reinforced, yes. So yes, indicates steel here. Second case here, aluminium conductor, alloy reinforced same here all aluminium see it has been indicated all aluminium alloy reinforced next term eesr uh, that is expanded all uh, that is aluminium conductor steel reinforced this will be used in extra high voltage transmission line okay fine sir next one we will talk about other types the classifications of the uh, conductors are first one we can call it as bundled conductor next we will be going with the composite standard conductor and uh, we will be using standard connector, hollow connector, solid connector and I have given all the other things where we are using its transponder rating and all just have a small hints next when we are talking about bundled connector it, has having, it is having many advantages it, has, it is often being asked in your examination also if you talk about the bundled connector communication line interference will be reduced I told you know when we are going with a huge amount of voltage in the transmission line communication interference will be there that can be avoided by using bundled connector and we are also having the another drawback. When the voltage is more in the transmission line, it may lead to corona discharge. That can also be avoided with the help of bundled conductor. If corona discharge will increase, then losses occurring in the transmission line will decrease. It leads to increase the efficiency. Similarly, it is also increasing the stability. Yes, and it is also decreasing the inductance and increasing the value of capacitance. Because of this, the value of surge impedance also will be decreasing in case of bundled conductor. Next, let us talk about translator. Sorry. <laughs> Insulator. The transmission line will be talking about insulator. So we know the structure of uh, form of uh, the structure form of insulator. Here I am considering only three insulators and its corresponding equivalent electrical structure. And we know uh, the between the harm and the insulator, there will be one more mutual capacitance will be existing that will be represented as CM. And here we will be distributing the voltage as V1, V2, V3 from the supply voltage that is line voltage that has been highlighted here. And uh, if you are asking the most of the time, the most important formula that has been offered on this efficiency of the insulin. Try to learn, if you don't remember the procedures, try to learn, have a quick uh, look into this. Here I am directly writing the string efficiency. This is called a string efficiency. And uh, this we are calculating from this uh, string of our structure. And uh, efficiency will be inversely proportional to the number of insulators that we are considering. As you keep on increasing the number of insulators, auto auto automatically what will happen? Efficiency of the complete string will get. Take this goes down. Right, so.
Next, types of insulators, you know, uh, glass insulator, disc insulator, post insulator, uh, pin insulator, we will be having shackle insulator, strain, stay, suspension, there are so many. Yeah, I have written the ratings of each and every insulator, just to make a small hit. Because in your examination, direct theoretical questions will be asked also. Okay, next. Let us discuss about transmission line parameters. You know, in transmission line, we will be having generator, transformers, transmission line. Uh, equivalent circuit of the transmission line, its correspondent losses. Basically, we will be having four important parameters in transmission line. Series parameter and shunt parameters. Series parameters are R and L, shunt parameters are conductance and capacitance. This capacitance is taking the responsibility for the charging. Because of this only, we will be facing a effect is called a Faraday effect. What is the meaning of Faraday effect? Because of this charging process in a transmission line, even no load also, though you are not connecting any load at the receiving end, during the no load also you can observe there is this Faraday effect will be uh, light load and uh, during no load and light load you can see its severe effect clearly you can observe it how this voltage will be being increased at the receiving end when we are comparing it with the sending end voltage this is Faraday effect this happened because of this uh, capacitor only okay and the serious resistor will be taking responsibility for I square losses this will be leads to decrease the efficiency conductance will be there it is because of the leakage current but it is very less now let us talk about skin effect in the transmission line. When we are talking about the skin effect, it is just because of the non-uniform distribution of the AC current. The most important thing is, this is because of AC current, not because of a DC current. Okay, so skin effect will be observing because of AC current. I can say in a cross-sectional area of the conductor, you can observe current that the electrons are being distributed or charges are being focusing on only at the surface of the, of the conductor in the center point the current will become very 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 less. So current will be non-uniformly distributed. At the center point of the conductor almost the current flow will become 0 ampere. Yes. And if you focus on the cross sectional area, you can see that is the front view. Current, the current concentration will be very high near to the surface of the conductor. So this is simply called skin effect. When we are passing AC current through the conductor, we are observing this. Yes. Next up. Uh, <coughs> If you are calculating the value of uh, resistance uh, in, ca in case of uh, by passing the AC with the DC, the resistance offered by the AC current in the transmission line will be higher than the value of the resistance offered by the DC current. Fine, sir. Now, let us uh, talk, uh, talk about the proximity effect. Proximity effect when I am uh, bringing one conductor into the vicinity of other conductor, the flux generated by both of them will be attracting each other. In result, what will happen is here leakage reactance will become more. Because of this, if you observe the surface, near surface between these two conductors, here the leakage reactance will be increasing a lot. It may lead to, if the reactance will increase, then the current carried by the conductor nearest to this zone. In this zone, you can observe current value will be reducing. That is, current will be focusing on more and more near to the other side of the conductor. This is simply called a proximity effect. Next, let us talk about inductance calculations. Now, you know, in inductance, we will be talking about uh, two people, one is uh, GMD. Another one is GMR. This GMD can also be called self GMD. Yes, and this self GMD calculations will be done only for inductance, not for capacitance calculation. We are doing both capacitance and inductance calculation. No, self GMD calculations can be done only for what inductance. Don't forget this. Yes. Next, uh, GMR. It is the distance between the center of the conductor. See, here it has been highlighted between the center to the surface of the conductor circumference, or I can say. Yes, so this is simply called the GMR and uh, due to the internal leakage flux, we might have done the uh, calculations already. We are not going with the actual uh, radius, we will be going with the fictitious. The thing is, there will be an assumption, it will be leads. What happens, the approximate value of the geometric mean radius of a specific integer conductor will be 0 0.7788 times of original radius. Understood? Yes. Now, if you are talking about the another calculation that is called the GMD, geometric mean distance. This will be done for both inductance and the capacitance calculations, of course. Geometric mean distance, it is if you are taking a bundle of conductor, between each and every conductor, what will be the actual distance? That is what talking about geometric mean distance. So, there is a difference between geometric mean radius. It is talking about self, individual distance. If I am taking the phase A, in phase A, what is the conductor and what is the distance? In phase A itself, if I am carrying the two conductor, two conductors are attached to each other and uh, that is at a single phase. In that case, we will be talking about self conductor, phase A conductors, what is the mutual distance between them? That is called the self GMD. 
Where is mutual GFD means this is this can be phase here, this can be phase here, or some other conductors will be there. Between the different phase group, we'll be trying to find out the distance. That is called geometric mean distance. And this is the formula. N times means number of conductors. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, N. If we are having three conductors, then three times of a <coughs> cube root. Cube root of distance between the three conductors. Understood? That is GMD calculation. Let us continue. Next, if I am talking about the inductance of a single phase two wire one, I have written the formula separately for phase A or phase B or the total inductance. Next, if you are talking about inductance of the three phase line, I have written the general inductance for phase calculations. In three phase, you will be having different types of configuration. If you are having symmetrical configuration, then the formula will be written here. If you are having unsymmetrical configuration, then also formula is given. I have written here. Next, let us talk about capacitance. For single phase, as is shown, per phase between neutral and DA, or phase between phase and neutral, this is the formula. Then line to line capacitance, I have written here. Yes. And here, R. I have already told you that we are not considering the effect of that 0.778. I have told this factor is arising because of the leakage flux. So when we are talking about capacitor, there will be no work for flux. So you will not consider this value, directly take the radius. Now if I am taking the two connectors, if both are having same radius, then what will happen, RA will become equal to RB, or I can simply say that will be equal to R. So under square root, you will be having R square, it will be coming out of R only. Directly you can substitute that formula here. Yes. So actually this D is nothing but GMD. And this is nothing but GMR only, but I told self GMD is not done, directly we will be taking the radius. We are not considering the effect 0 0.778 at all. Okay, fine. So for a three phase line, this is the formula, radius of the conductor will be directly given and you can directly substitute it. And this is geometric mean distance, you know how to calculate this. And uh, if you are talking about symmetrical and asymmetrical configuration, as such, for a symmetrical configuration, three distance will be equal. So cube root of three times will be getting D only again. Okay? Because what will happen? You know it will get cancer. For asymmetrical configuration, you will have to go ahead with this formula to explore the value of GMT. Next, when we are talking about charging current, as I already told you that, because of the capacitance formation between line to earth or between the line, we will have the effect of this charging current. So when I am talking about line to line charging current, you will have to go ahead with the line capacitance and the line voltage. And if you are going with the per phase, if you want per phase uh, current, then you will have to divide it by 2. Uh, then that will be giving you a uh, line charge. See, actually this is per phase capacitance. You will have to divide it by 2 to obtain the line capacitance. Then you can explore this value. Suppose if you are going with the per phase charging current, then you will have to go ahead with the per phase capacitance and per phase voltage. That's it. Next, in a transmission line, let us see some of the things. The thing is, if I am increasing the length of the transmission line, then what will happen to resistor inductive reactants and capacitive reactants? If I am increasing the distance between the line, then what will happen? If I am increasing the radius of the conductor, then what will happen? If I am increasing the height from the ground, see, we will be having supporting rods. From here, we are carrying the transmission line from the ground. If I am standing here, if I am increasing the height of the tower and I am shifting the conductor from here to here, then what will happen? So, these are the some of the observations. See, first thing, let me show. When we are increasing the length of the transmission line, it will lead to resistance, in the, it will increase, inductive reactance will increase, but capacity reactance will decrease. Similarly, uh, if you talk about uh, uh, <coughs> distance between the transmission line, when the distance will increase, automatically what will happen is resistance will not change, but inductive reactance will change and the capacity reactance will decrease. This will increase, that will decrease. Sorry guys. Yeah. Next, if I am talking about radius of the conductor, obviously this will decrease. If I am increasing the radius of the conductor, then resistance will decrease, inductive reactance will decrease, capacity reactance also will decrease. When I am increasing the height, as I told you already, then what will happen? Resistance will not change, inductive reactance will not change, but capacity reactance will decrease. Next, let us discuss about transmission lines. We will be having different types of transmission line. Yes, short transmission line, we know its corresponding length and its corresponding ABCD parameter and a open circuit. This is the general formula for any transmission line. This is not only for short transmission. For any transmission line, this is the general formula to obtain the open circuit characteristic impedance and short circuit impedance. By multiplying this, you can obtain the original characteristic impedance by taking square root of that is geometric mean of open circuit impedance and short circuit impedance. This is the formula. Now here you can substitute the ABCD parameter of the short transmission line to explore the value of characteristic impedance because I said this is general. This formula is the general one. Now after that for a short transmission line condition for symmetricity under reciprocity. Next.
Yeah, when we are talking about this is the equivalent circuit and this is the formula, general formula for uh, voltage regulation. For short transmission line, here no load voltage at the receiving end will be equal to sending end voltage divided by, by AV slip and A. And here, what is the formula? No load voltage at the receiving end, full load voltage at the receiving end, R stands for receiving end. Divided by full load voltage at the receiving end. No load voltage at the receiving end will be equal to sending end voltage divided by parameter A. Next, let us talk about approximate voltage regulation. That can be rewritten. The, the previous one can be rewritten like this. This is the formula. Plus is lagging and the minus is for leading power factors of the transmission line. We know it very well. And if you are talking about percentage resistance will be directly given and the percentage reactance will be given with the power factor. Directly for lagging and the leading power factor, you can explore the value of voltage regulation without any doubts. Next, the voltage regulation will be become will become maximum in transmission line when the value of a power factor phi or the receiving end will become equal to impedance offered by the transmission line. They, they both should be equal. See, transmission line will be offering some resistance and the reactance. Yes. Load will be offering some resistance and the reactance. If these two people will become equal to each other, then I can say voltage regulation will become maximum. Voltage regulation will become zero when the receiving end power factor angle will become equal to pi by 2 minus theta. And theta means impedance and that's all. Now, uh, fine, let us continue. The voltage regulation approximately equal to per unit impedance. If per unit impedance will be given in the question and you are requested to calculate the voltage regulation directly, you can uh, write out the answer. Okay. And this is the complex representation of the ABCD parameter of the transmission line. Here we can see the range A and its corresponding angle is alpha, B is corresponding angle is beta, C is corresponding angle is gamma, D is corresponding angle is delta. And their corresponding range is also different here. Yes. Next. Let us talk about the generalized power formula for the transmission line. This is the general real power formula. If you replace cos by sine, then that will be giving you the general a complex power formula for reactive power. So this is for sending it. Similarly for the receiving it, I, I wrote already here. Replace sine by sorry, pass by sine will be getting for reactive power also. Next, if you are talking about uh, short transmission line is power. See, remember I have given some general formula. This is not only for short transmission line. These are all general formula. Here you will have to substitute the value of uh, phase angles alpha, beta, gamma, or delta for different different transmission line. For short transmission line, you know its value for medium, you know its value for Long you know its value, so by, by substituting those values, you can obtain the power distribution for different models. You know, medium transmission line can be modeled as T model and Y model. Formula is given here, just you can note it down. When we are talking about long transmission line, ABC parameter I wrote here. Here, ZC stands for characteristic impedance. Characteristic impedance I have the detailedly uh, derived here. It will be divided by impedance by admittance and its formula. This is impedance means serious parameter of the transmission line. And uh, Y that is talking about conductance, conductance and capacitance that is shunt parameter Y. By using this, we can calculate the value of characteristic impedance. For a lossless transmission line, of course, the value of resistance and the G is almost very, very less in the transmission line. So, by ignoring this, you can cancel this, you can rewrite this formula. So, characteristic impedance can be directly written as L by C whole power 1 by 2. So, in our transmission line, here I have also uh, explored the other parameter the representation for gamma actually this gamma is equal to alpha plus j times of beta where alpha is the attenuation constant and beta is the phase constant now if you are exploring the value by substituting z equal to you know r plus j omega l and y is equal to g plus j omega c okay now what you have to do just if you are ignoring the effect of r and l this will be directly giving you the value of you can substitute these two values and it will be explore the value of r got it that's all. And here I have given the expansion for sin gamma L and cos gamma L. By using this, you can expand this. And in the examination, if they are asking you to calculate the value of uh, parameter A or parameter C or parameter B, you have to remove this one now. Next, let us discuss about Parandi effect. Parandi effect will be ignored in trans a short transmission line. It is being observed only in medium to long transmission line. Because in short transmission line, the voltage build-up process is very less. We are not considering the effect of charging capacitance for short transmission line. Conductance effect that is ignored, capacitance effect also ignored. But Parenti effect where it cannot be ignored in medium to long transmission line. When we are talking about long transmission, sorry, medium to long transmission line, Parenti effect you can observe as I already told you under no load or lightly loaded transmission lines, where receiving end voltage will become higher than the value of sending in voltage. Next, let us discuss about wavelength and the velocity of wave propagation. The most important thing, if they are asking you to calculate the value of wavelength, then 
Where will it be indicated by lambda? Its formula is 2 pi by beta. Beta is written as omega into square root of L into C. Where velocity of wave propagation is the product of frequency in the wavelength. Where is la lambda? Wavelength can be replaced by 2 pi by beta. That is what I did here. Beta can be replaced by omega into square root of L into C. Omega further can be replaced by 2 pi f. Then what will happen? Numerator 2 pi f, denominator 2 pi f will get cancelled. The velocity of wave propagation will become 1 by square root of L C. And it can also be defined in terms of left view permeability and permittivity. So by substituting this, you can explore the uh, velocity of wave propagation for different. If I am uh, calculating the velocity of wave propagation for air, it will become 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second. Yes. For underground cable, this will be 3 into 10 power 8 by mu naught epsilon naught epsilon naught square root meter per second. When I am talking about dielectric material, the value of the relative permittivity is always greater than 1. Dielectric means insulating materials. For them, this is the formula to obtain the velocity of wave propagation. When I am comparing the velocity of wave propagation of the underground cable with the overhead line, this speed is always higher than the value of underground cable. Okay, fine, sir. Next, if you are talking about surge impedance loading, I have written the formula for a single phase surge impedance, three phase surge impedance loading, and a pixel for a transmission line, it is 400. For a transformer, it will be 5000. For underground cable, this will be 40. And uh, when we are observing the transmission line, if the loading effect, if the load capacity SL indicates the load capacity of the transmission line, if the load capacity of the transmission line is higher than the value of surge impedance loading, then the nature of the transmission line will be, power factor will be lagging. If the load impedance will become less than the value of surge impedance loading, then the power system will be leading to leading power factor. So I can say. If the loading uh, capacity will become equal to the value of surge impedance loading, then the power factor will be unity. Remember, these are our one more questions. Next, when we are talking about uh, economic load dispatch, the best economic load dispatching is underground cable. If you are loading the underground cable, the loading capacity of the underground cable is less than surge impedance loading, then we can have economic uh, load, economic operation. It means the <coughs> cost will become very less. So, in order to have the economic load dispatch for underground cable, the loading capacity of the transmission line always maintained as less than surge impedance loading. Whereas in the overhead line, loading capacity of the transmission line will be always greater than the value of surge impedance loading to have economic load dispatch. Don't forget, very important. Next, let us discuss about tra tra traveling wave concept. Have a quick revision. See, we are passing, this is called the incident wave, voltage and the current. And uh, they will be heating. When we are entering into some different medium, for an example, uh, we are carrying one transmission line from Delhi to Kashmir. Kashmir is fully high, we know. Whereas Delhi is very hot. So here temperature is different, here temperature will be different. So when a transmission line is going from one medium to another medium, then what will happen is there will be some incidents. These traveling waves, voltage and the current waves are called traveling waves. They will be when the medium is suddenly changing. There are two types of waveform will be have. Uh, this uh, incident wave will be split into two different waveform. One is refracted wave or transmitted wave, and another one is reflected wave. So here V1 and I1 you can take. V1 I1 stands for reflected waves, and the refraction means transmitted waves to the second medium that is called V2 I2. I am indicating like this. Now here I have written the formula and uh, see characteristic impedance of medium one that is the load impedance in the medium two. From this, I have derived all the formulas for this is coefficients that is called C. V2, what is V2 here? V2 means refraction, so that is called the refraction coefficient. First one is this is not directly coefficient, I am calling it as refracted voltage and uh, refracted current or transmitted current. We can also call it as transmitted voltage, transmitted current formula, general formula. Similarly, reflected voltage and reflected current formula also I have written clearly here. Yes. And here, this has been derived in terms of incident voltage, that is forward voltage and the forward currents. If you are taking the ratio between the uh, reflected, uh, refracted voltage and the supply voltage, then that is called the refraction coefficients. So, refraction coefficients in voltage, refraction coefficients in current I2 by I, and the V1 by V, I1 by I, they are called coefficients. Next, if the line on the receiving end, see, here in the second medium, while going from medium 1 to medium 2, if you are having purely resistive in nature, medium 2 is having resistance, then what is the formula? What is the coefficients formula? So I have written here. 
If the second medium is short circuited, then what will happen? If the second medium is open circuited, then what will happen? I wrote everything clearly here. Yes. Please ignore this. That will be a printing. Sorry. Writing mistake. I2 by I equal to 2. Everything I wrote. Just to see. This is most important area. You will have question often. It's a quick revision. I am unable to explain the complete operations. If you want to remember all these things, just to go get and watch our power system lecture. Next, let us talk about corona loss. That is the most important formula I have written here. And I wrote all the uh, uh, individual parameters also here. That is uh, F is indicates the frequency. This is supply voltage. This is a disruptive voltage. Yes, we know. R indicates steadiness of the conductor. Distance, uh, distance. So here I wrote small d now. Distance between the conductors. Everything I wrote here. Yes. Now by using this formula, we can explore the power loss, corona loss. Delta will be given. Don't worry. Delta will be given. Right. So that is atmospheric factor, density factor that will be given. You can directly explore the total power loss by using this formula. And here you will have to observe the relation. Power versus frequency. It will be directly proportional to F plus 25. And it is directly proportional to R by D whole power 1 by 2. It will be directly proportional to B minus. Yeah, V minus V equal to volts, volt square. So when they are changing the critical disruptive voltage, then what will happen? They will be framing different types of questions, but most of the time they will be changing different frequency versus power loss. So corona discharge is directly proportional to F plus 25. Remember this. This is most important relation. Often being asked in the examination. Let us talk about underground cable. The insulation resistance of the underground cable equal to resistivity of the underground cable divided by length, uh, circumference length of the underground cable that is rho by 2 pi l, total circumference rho by 2 pi l into ln of external radius divided by internal radius. Internal radius means internally we will be having core and the surrounded the core will be having the sheath. So total radius of the sheath will become that is in the numerator divided by ln of internal radius of the core. Now the capacitance of the underground cable formula I wrote here separately. Next, if you are talking about the electric stretch, the core and the sheath. So, this is the core. What about the electric stretch internally? Under the sheath, what is the electric stretch? Sorry, electric stretch. Now, you can explore these two and you are comparing core, the electric stress suffered by the core is always higher than the value of sheath. And if you are drawing the graph from the center of the core to external point and going from core to sheath, the electric stress will become, it will be slowly. What will happen is here value is very high, there will be slowly decreasing. Okay, that is how electrical intensity, electric stress can be absorbed here. Next, here the most important thing is whenever we are conducting the stable operation for underground cables, that be a relation. The internal radius, core radius must, must be less than the value of 0.368 times of external radius. This is the perfect condition for stable operation for core, sorry, for underground cables. Right? So, here the value of uh, the ratio between the internal radius and external radius will be approximately equal to 1 by E or approximately equal to 0 0.368. That is economical and stable operating conditions. Next, let us discuss about fault analysis. In fault analysis, first thing is for any quantities. Some of you are having a little bit confusion. Now, if you observe the things that I wrote here clearly, you will be understanding. While calculating the foreign quantities, Formula for apparent power. S yes, stands for apparent power. Formula for real power. Denominator you must keep base apparent power. Remember this. For real power and reactive power. You people are having a confusion here. Next, when you are talking about per unit voltage, no problem. This is the formula for per unit current. Per unit impedance, no issues. But when you are calculating per unit resistance, you will have to go ahead with the base impedance in the denominator. For Similarly, for reactors also base impedance will be lies here. And you know, I hope you all know the uh, formulas to calculate the of base impedance and base current and all. Yes. Now, in a transmission line, when we are shifting, when we are going from one uh, base value to another base value, this is the formula to obtain the new base impedance. Yes. Just have a quick uh, recapture of it. Yes. Next, uh, how to calculate the base impedance for star connection and the delta connection? You know, the relation between the star and the delta is always a factor 3 will be coming. If I am going comparing it with your delta, if you are going from delta to star, then impedance will be three times reduced. If I am coming from star to delta, then impedance will be three times increased. So that is what is uh, what is written here. You can compare these two. See that? Yes. Always remember while targeting the base impedance, delta will be scaled by a factor of three. Okay. Fine, sir. Next, let us talk about different uh, sequence network. See, we will be having uh, two types of network. One is called a symmetrical network, and another one is called unsymmetrical network. 
For symmetrical network, we don't have any problem because during the fault also our network will be remains balanced. So symmetrical fault means we know a triple line fault and a triple line to ground fault are called symmetrical fault. It means during the fault also, if we add addition of three phase current will become equal to zero. That is what they are trying to mean. This is called balanced fault. So it doesn't matter, though it is connected to the ground or without ground, you can see addition of these three phases always equal to zero. Then what is the point of thinking about this ground? That's why triple line and a triple line to ground faults are giving the same condition. Yes. Next up, let us talk about Fortescue theorem for unbalanced fault. Unsymmetrical fault will be break into symmetrical fault components. We know that is if we are having n phase of unbalanced component, it can be written as n minus 1 times of balanced component and 1 cofacial. Cofacial means all are aligned in the same direction with the same magnitude, no phase difference. Balanced component can be further classified into two types one is positive sequence, another one is negative sequence. Totally, if you are having a three phase system, it can be classified into 3 minus 1, that is 2 balanced component, 1 cofacial quantity, that is positive, negative, zero sequence components. Next. Let us discuss about the relation. Suppose if I am talking about the unsymmetrical fault. During the unsymmetrical fault, I have been told you that I need a zero sequence voltage, positive sequence voltage, negative sequence voltage for each and every phase. This is the formula. So this total term is called A inverse. This will be A. And here I can define phase A, phase B, phase C and its corresponding relation. Phase A voltage can be broken into three of positive zero sequence, positive sequence, negative sequence. Phase 3 can be written as 3 form positive negative 0 sequence. Phase 3 can be written in terms of positive negative 0 sequence counter. If you replace voltage by current, same expression should be appearing for current also. So, did you understand? In simple, in simple we can say phase ABC voltage can be related with the network that is a representation matrix A with the 0 positive negative sequence relation. Similarly, if you want to know the value of 0 positive negative sequence voltage, then go ahead with the A inverse with the ABC voltage. Simply it can be written like this. Similarly, replace voltage by current, you will be getting the expression. For impedance, if I am having phase ABC impedance, what is the formula to obtain the zero positive negative sequence impedance? This is the generalized formula for this. Okay, you will have to multiply A inverse ABC with the A. This is the order, don't interchange it. Fine, sir. Next term, let us talk about alternator. Equal circuit. Suppose if the alternator is facing unsymmetrical fault, then the positive equivalent circuit, we know. So, for each and every phase, we can separately draw the positive sequence network, negative sequence network, and a zero sequence network. So, this is the separate uh, arrangements. So, when we are talking about the zero sequence network, we will be talking about neutral line. Yes, that neutral line impedance will become three times of ZN. Suppose if the value of neutral line impedance will be infinity, then that is called a neutral isolation. We are calling it as neutral isolation. In that case, this will be acting as a open circuit and the value of zero sequence component will become zero ampere when the neutral is isolated. That is it. <coughs> that is all about it. Now, when we are talking about the alternator, it can be classified into two types. One is salient pole, another one is non-salient pole. So, when I am taking positive negative zero sequence component of the uh, salient pole machine, see there. For salient pole machine, positive sequence is higher than negative sequence. This is greater than zero sequence. That is the order. Whereas for non-salient pole machine, positive and negative sequence impedance are equal, but they are higher than the value of zero sequence impedance. Next, for a transmission line, when there is an unsymmetrical fault, a transmission line for each and every phases, I am drawing per phase equivalent circuits only. So let, let us take phase A, and phase A can be resolved into three components: positive sequence, negative sequence, zero sequence. Like that, all other components also. So if you are talking about the per phase, uh, per phase uh, balance the equivalent circuit of the unsymmetrical fault. So this is the positive representation, negative sequence, this is zero sequence representation. For a transmission line, positive and negative sequence are, are equal. See, each and every transmission line will be having self-impedance plus mutual impedance. When we are comparing this, see, this is the formula. Positive and negative sequence impedance are equal to self-impedance minus mutual impedance. Whereas zero sequence is equal to ZS plus twice of ZN. So the approximate formula, if positive sequence or negative sequence will be given, then zero sequence can be approximately written as three times of Z1. This can also be written as 3 times of Z2. Why? Z1 and Z2 both are equal, no? Next. For a transformer, positive and negative zero sequence all are equal. But I don't have any problem with the positive or negative sequence, but you will have a problem with the zero sequence center. Why? Because zero sequence component sometimes will exist, sometimes will not exist. It's based on the connection. If you say, uh, we will be three phase connection, we will be having different connection, no star star connection, star delta, 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 delta star, 
Yes. Here, what you will have to understand is first the property of star. If you observe star with the neutral, if it will be represented like this, then zero sequence component will not be zero. Suppose if the star is existing like this, that is called without neutral, in that case, zero sequence component will become zero. This is zero sequence component. This will be zero, not equal to zero. This will be equal to zero. Okay, that is zero sequence component. Similarly, when we are observing the delta, internally you can observe the zero sequence component. But in the line, you will not be having zero sequence component. We know that. In line, zero sequence component will not appear. Understood? Now here, this is the equivalent circuit of the three phase star, the star, transformer connection. Now here, this switches S1 and S2 will be talking about delta connection. Primary and secondary side. S3 and S4 is talking about, uh, sorry, this is star connection. And this will be talking about delta connection. Suppose if the primary is star, secondary is star, then what will happen is star without neutral, then without neutral means impedance value will be approaching to infinity. So primary will be open, secondary also will be open. So if you draw the equivalent circuit, one second. Yeah. So if you draw the equivalent circuit, star without neutral, primary side open and the secondary side also, internal impedance will be there, then the secondary side also will be open. That is the equivalent circuit of star star without neutral. If, the, if you have star with the neutral, then this will be get connected and along with the internal impedance, you will have three types of neutral impedance. Secondary without neutral, then it will open. If secondary will be appearing with the neutral, primary also already appeared with the neutral. In that case, both will be closed. This is star-star connection. When we are going with the delta-delta, suppose primary is star neutral, secondary is delta. Secondary, primary is star neutral, it will be closed, neutral impedance will appear. Delta means parallel line will get closed, serious line will get open like this. This will close, this will open, this will remain so open. Similarly, if primary is delta, secondary will be star, then what will happen? Primary is delta, this will close, switch will open, will have an impedance. Secondary is star with the neutral, then line will be closed. Without neutral, primary is delta, secondary is star without neutral. This is how it will be? Yes. This is how we are drawing the uh, zero sequence sequence circuit of the transformer. Now, let us talk about the balanced default. Balanced default only will have uh, triple line or triple line default. I have already explained everything. So, this is the formula. In balanced default, you will have only one component, positive sequence. Negative and the zero sequence component will not appear. That will be zero. And the zero sequence component is also zero. You will have only one component for symmetrical fault, that is positive sequence. So, this is the free fault per unit voltage. This will be always one at an angle of zero degree per unit. Fix it. Positive sequence impedance will be given in an examination by taking the ratio between them, you can calculate the per unit for the current or positive sequence current, both are equal only. So, from this, if somebody will be asking you to calculate the short circuit MVA capacity, then go ahead with the per unit power into base power. Per unit power, this is one voltage, this can be replaced by one by positive sequence, this is what I written here. So, this can be written like this. Next. When we are talking about unsymmetrical fault, line to ground fault, I have wrote all the conditions just to write down uh, properly. Next for line to line fault, pause the video, write down all the conditions. Then for double line to ground fault, I wrote everything properly just to make it note down. Just note it down. Next, uh, first step will be done. See, I have wrote down double line to ground fault. Next, line to line fault. Next, line to ground fault. Write down everything properly. Next. Let us talk about stability analysis. So when it comes to picture, stability analysis, we will be having two types, one is steady state stability, another one is transient stability. Steady state stability can be simply done with the help of power transfer equation. But uh, this uh, transient stability can be done with the only strain equation. So this is the strain equation I wrote here. So this is moment of inertia. We can call it as angular momentum. We are calling it as angular momentum, not moment of inertia. That word will be used for change. Angular momentum, yeah. Into d square delta by dt square equal to Pa, that is accelerating power. This will be equal to mechanical power minus electrical power. Electrical power equal to maximum power into EV uh, sine delta, sorry, maximum power into sine delta. Maximum power is nothing but the ratio between internally generator voltage, terminal voltage divided by reactance x. Fine. Let us talk about the inertia constant we catch. Okay. See, this angular momentum can also be called inertia constant. H also called inertia constant, but there will be a difference. In your examination, if they are asking you inertia constant, explore it in terms of, see this is, kinetic energy is megajoules seconds. 
divided by this is MVA. So one second. Uh, if you are talking about only kinetic energy, then you can simply write down this one. That will be question. So when I am talking about the inertia constant, energy means joules. After MVA rating is it is simply MVA. So when I am talking about only energy, in terms of power we can define it as megawatt seconds, but I am writing it in joules. So if it is different in megajoules per MVA, then they are talking about inertia constant EH. If they are talking about, if your if your unit is given megajoules seconds per electrical radian or megajoules seconds per electrical degree, then they are talking about inertia constant EM. And I wrote all the formula, kinetic energy, H formula, and EM formula. Remember all this, they are very very important. Fine, sir. Another thing. Uh, swinging operation, non-swinging operation during this stability analysis. If the machine is swinging together, then this is the formula of the calculate value of uh, M equal to inertia constant of the two machines, M. And from this, you can also write down the inertia constant of the two machines in terms of EH. If they are not swinging together, swinging together means what? The vibrations or the disturbance experienced by the alternator will be in the same direction. Not swinging together means the experience, disturbance experienced by the alternator will be in the opposite directions. Fine, sir. So, this is the formula to obtain the Yami current when the machine is not swinging together. Now, in stability, the most important formula is critical clearing. So, this is the formula to obtain. I am suggesting you just to have uh, watch our lecture once, stability analysis. There, I have clearly explained it different, different. Very quick manner, I have given the explanation. What is the P max 3, where we are obtaining, what is P max 2 or not? Because here we are not having that much time. But anyway, let me quickly tell you this is mechanical power. Okay, it will be given here examination. Shaft power or mechanical power. So here I wrote the formula to calculate the value of delta max under delta naught directly. You don't need to be bothered. Now here let me explain. Then we will be having three types of maximum power. One is P max 1. I have written here. Now. This is before the fault occurrence. P max 2, I have written here, that is during fault. P max 3, that is after fault, maximum electrical power can be the transmission line. All this value will be given. Directly substitute and calculate the value of critical clearing line. If they are asking critical clearing time, then use this formula. Everything will be given directly, you can just reserve and tell them the answer. Fine, sir. Next, uh, let us talk about the production. So, we have completed all important terms. Almost we are in the end. Next one is protective release. So based on the construction, so prior to that, let me give one more, uh, one, let me talk about one more relay that is called a thermal relay. You will be using uh, for this, sorry, you will be using this uh, thermal relay for overload protection. This will be used for overload protection. Fine, sir. Now let us talk about based on the construction, we will be designing two types of relay. One is called attracted armature type relay, another one is balanced beam type of relay. So this <coughs> further, if you are talking about in terms of electromagnetic induction principle, we will be having induction top type of relay and shattered port relay, what metal type of relays. Okay. Next, let us uh, discuss about the uh, over current relays, we will be having definite minimum time relay, inverse relay and the uh, <coughs> inverse definite uh, minimum time relay, yes. And I have given its corresponding characteristics and time versus fault different. Next. When we are talking about directional and non-directional relay, I have given one small example. See, what is the meaning of a directional relay? Directional relay will operate based on two things. One is pickup current, another one is direction of the current. One is pickup current, another one is plus direction of the current. Specific direction only it will operate, not in all direction. Whereas non-directional relay will operate in both directions, just so it will consider only pickup value of the current. So what you are trying to mean? Let me explain. When I am talking about the direction of relay, for an example, suppose if there is a fault in the transmission line. So during this fault, I will have to fix the direction of relay at a non-direction relay. What will happen is before fault occurrence, let us say before fault, what will happen here? Before fault transmission line, current will be going from here, will be going from here, and will be going coming from here. Let us take let us pass it to the some loads. Let us take there is a load, it will be all the power will be distributed to the loads which are being connected here. Let us assume like this. This is load point. Okay, sir, so that will be fine. Now we will be having four relay here. Let me take relay one, relay two, and uh, relay three, relay four. We will be having different types of fault. One is fault at the mid of the transmission line and a fault near to the alternator. Fault at the bus bar will be having several characteristics. One example will let us take only one case. Suppose if the fault is occurred at the middle of the transmission line, now what will happen? 
what will be happening here is see that fault current will be always higher than the value of load current when there is a fault then the load current will be assumed to be zero immediately all the load current will be assumed to be zero then what is the meaning what will happen is the current delivered by both of these alternator will be diverted to the faulted zone it means initially current is going in this direction just to focus current is going in this direction now during the fault also during the fault also from the alternator one current is coming here current is coming here it is crossing this relay then the current will be diverted to the ground but if you observe the second alternator current is initially before fault it is coming like this then it will be distributed to the load but now during the fault load current will become zero that is our assumption it means the current supplied by the alternator will be going here and will be going to the fault and so on so the direction of the current will be reversed here yes then this relay will be treated as the directional relay what it will do is it will sense earlier case when system is normal condition current was going in this direction from left to right now during the faulted condition direction of the current is reversed so immediately this relay will identify in this so here it is the best place where we can keep the directional relay it will identify yes here the direction of the current is reversed then it will check whether the reversed direction of the current is abnormal value or not that is called pickup current i have introduced one more current now that is called pickup current because simply if the direction of the current will reverse and the reversed current value is very very less then there is no point of operating the relay so i will have to check whether the current level is very high or not but we know during the fault the value of the fault current that is called pickup current several times higher than the value of the rated current so definitely this pickup current is very very high so what will happen immediately the relay will operate and it will send the signal to the circuit breaker and ask them to trip this fault and so on so here we can keep the directional relay where you yes, see before the fault also relay 4 is carrying the current in this direction during the fault also it is carrying the same direction current but what happened before fault it is it was carrying rated current during the fault the fault current value will become several times higher than the value of rated current so here with the help of direction of the current i cannot identify the fault so i will have to go ahead with a non directional relay which will be supporting me to identify the fault non directional relay will just to testify the fault current it will not focus on the direction of the current so like that by designing the power system we will be choosing the relay directional relay required we will be checking where directional relay is required where non directional relay is required based on the requirement we will be placing these two relays next talk about the differential relay basically differential relay is sometimes right uh, fixed for internal faults it will be identifying the faults between the two points we know in differential uh, relay we will be having current transfer on two sides so here this will be your yeah center zone so this is coming from one side of the current transformer and this will be coming from another side of the current transformer. this is secondary side this is secondary side this both are secondary side primary side is connected with the transmission line so this primary side is connected with the transmission line now here the both current will be coming here yes suppose let us say one current is coming here and is going in this way this is your <coughs> restraining coil and the force developed by this coil is called restraining force this will be uh, developing the operating force these two people together will be developing the operating force now the current suppose the current i1 is coming here and here the current is i2 is going then at the mid here what will happen if you apply case here this current will become i1 minus i2 yes and the number of turns offered by this coil let me call it as uh, restraining coil nr whereas for the operating coil number of turns has been divided by 2 so this will be nr by 2 sorry operating coil no no by 2 this will also no by 2 now what i can say operating force of individual coil will be having two operating coil on both sides if you calculate the operating force of the one coil it will become current i2 yes and i can say divided by sorry operating force means number of turns that is mm of n into i n value is operating coil n2 by 2 and uh, this is i2 and i1 and i2 both are if you calculate the uh, total current on both sides what will be having is one side will be i2 into n0 by 2 another one is another side is current is i1 and operating coil number of turns by 2 if you add these two then you will be getting the restraining force sorry operating force and the restraining force now here uh, what i did is so the center one is operating coil the other one is restraining coil these two coils are operating as a restraining coil just to correct it and if you repeat the same thing you will be getting so this is the formula for restraining force this is the formula for operating force don't think too much one second uh, this is 
sometimes unconsciously these mistakes will happen. See, we will be having two coils. They will be taking responsibility for the production of restraining force, total restraining force. This will become your operating coil. Yes. So, operating coil number of terms will be NO and the current will become I1 minus I2. By multiplying these two, you can bring the value of operating force and the restraining force will be developed here. Here, number of terms will be nr by 2. Here also number of terms will be nr by 2. And the current will be here. Current I1 will be going. Here current I2 will be going. Now if you can separately calculate the total restraining force and you can add them that will be giving you the resultant restraining force. By taking, see, from this you can bring the relation for bias. Most important question. Ratio between the number of terms in the restraining coil divided by number of terms in the operating coil. That can be explored in terms of their current. Remember this formula. So this is how that... Uh, this is the important things when we are talking about the differential relay. Differential relay will be operated when the value of the operating force will become higher than the value of restraining force. It means the value of the fault current will become higher than the value of rated current. Or pickup current will become higher than the value of rated current carried by the transmission line. Let us talk about the distance relay. There we are having different types of distance relay. One is voltage restrained over current relay. Another one is directional restrained over current relay. Another one is voltage restrained power current relay. So there is a difference, right? So when we are talking about these uh, different types of uh, relays, so first one is, if I am taking the first one, uh, when, when we are talking about the voltage restrained relay, what I can say, what, there will be another name for this voltage restrained power current relay. What is this? It is, it can also be called impedance relay. This is the most important thing, uh, term that you must keep it in your mind. Okay. So the another thing if you are talking about, uh, see, we know about impedance relay that will be used in medium transmission line. What is the alternative for, uh, name for this? The alternative name is voltage restrained over current relay. That is the alternative name that you must keep it in your mind. Yes. Now similarly, directional restrained over current relay can also be called reactance relay. Yes or no? That is what I wrote there. Yes. It can be called uh, over current relay. Okay. That we have understood. From this what I can say, what is the alternative name for this? This is reactance relay and for the earth fault, whenever you are observing the earth fault in the uh, transmission line, for that one also priority will be given for same type of relay only. You have to remember this. For earth fault relay also we will be giving, uh, sorry, giving importance for reactance relay. Okay sir. Next, the last one is more relay. More relay will be used in long transmission line whereas reactance relay will be used in short transmission line. More relay is also called Voltage restrained direction relay. See here I have wrote. This is not over current relay, it's a directional relay. Just correct it and uh, you can go ahead. So long transmission line, more relay. Short transmission line, reactance relay. Medium transmission line, impedance relay. Understood? Yes. Next, let us discuss about over current relay. We'll be, we'll be having a standard formula. Often it will be repeated in an examination. See, whenever fault is given, identify the current transformer secondary side fault current divided by current setting will be given in the equation directly. Current transformer secondary side uh, current you will have to take here. This will be current transformer ratio. By taking the ratio, see, on the numerator, yeah, I have wrote correctly. You will have to consider primary fault current, not secondary current. In the denominator, you will have to consider the secondary current. Here, current transformer ratio, this will be your current setting. To calculate the flux setting multiplier, most important question for over current place. Often being asked in examination. Flux setting multiplier. Fine, sir. The next formula is operating time period of the relay. That will be the most important. Right. So just to note it down. So this is here. Time multiplier setting will be directly given. Now you know how to calculate the flux setting multiplier. By putting both of them, you can easily find out the operating time of the relay. Fine, sir. Next, let us talk about circuit breaker. In circuit breaker, the first thing, natural frequency calculation and uh, uh, rate of restriking voltage maximum formula and then symmetrical braking capacity formula and then this is symmetrical braking current actually symmetrical braking RMS current normal current normal line current that will be given now making capacity formula will be 2.55 times of symmetrical braking capacity similarly making current will be equal to 2.55 times of symmetrical braking current this is the formula for making current. Remember it. Next, when we are talking about the resistance switching, this is the most another important term uh, from the circuit breaker. In resistance switching, uh, when there will be a sudden fault during the switching, 
if you want to run this uh, if you want to run this circuit breaker without oscillation then you will have to maintain this condition that is very important sorry you will have to maintain this condition equality resistance service should be equal to 1 by 2 times of L by C suppose if the value of resistance will become higher than the value of 1 by 2 in the L by C then what will happen then these things will change actually there may square root so this is called if you want to run this circuit breaker without oscillation then if there will be no uh, floating in nature in the transmission line, if there will be no vibration, then this is the condition for the uh, without oscillation. With the oscillation, if you are observing the system, then this is if the value of resistance is higher than the value of 1 by 2 times of L by C, then there will be a big vibration in the line. So, I have covered all important uh, formulas and the things uh, which are required for your power system. Almost uh, I have been covered, you know, I am giving authority for 90 to 95 percentage. Maybe some uh, formulas, some concepts I might be missed here. You will be taking care of it. Anyway, I have covered everything. Out of 10 questions, minimum you can crack 7 to 8 questions with the content that I have shared here. I hope you all will be utilizing this content properly and you will be rocking in the upcoming exams. Very all the best. Stay, stay tuned. We will be meet with the next session.